If you've ever felt unstable or out of balance while playing your drums, then today's lesson is for you. Without solving this, you'll struggle to feel relaxed, comfortable, and confident at the kit. But thankfully, you can fix this balance issue and feel at home on your drums simply by adjusting your throne. I'll show you exactly how to do this today. You can do this. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. So glad you're hanging out today. I help you become the drummer that other people want to jam with and have in their band. And we do this by teaching you the non-glamorous core skills to get you results faster. So, hey, I'm guessing you're here today because you're having a hard time feeling balanced on your kit. You feel like you're teetering. You just feel like things could topple at any moment. And especially if you're playing heel up on the kick. And so just nothing feels stable. You're not comfortable. So it's very difficult to feel confident. It's difficult to play musically because you're constantly thinking about the way you're sitting. I get it. That is frustrating. And I believe that really there are just three, three reasons why this is happening. Three reasons why you're not feeling balanced. And it's all going to come down to adjusting your throne right. It's going to help you out a ton. So we're get into that in just a minute first i have a free gift for you in the description below it's called it's my totally free e-guide called 25 rock grooves and fills for the beginner drummer so if you are a beginner most likely your biggest challenge is just getting up and running and knowing what to play like what grooves do i play what kick patterns uh, what fills do i play and you've got to be able to do these things if you want to nail your favorite songs and so my goal is to help you jump start your beginner progress by just spoon feeding you, hey, here's some grooves that happen in pop songs and rock songs, here's some common fills, learn these and you'll be able to play 95% of the songs you wanna play. This is your shortcut to really feeling like a drummer. So take today's lesson, get feeling comfortable at your kit and then grab that e-guide and you're really gonna be off to a really great start. So it's totally free, go grab that in the description. So the three reasons, three reasons why you're unstable on the drums. Number one, you're sitting too low. Number two, you're sitting too close, as in too close to the kick drum. You're not giving your legs enough room. And number three, you're not actually sitting up straight. So we're gonna dive into all three of these things and we're gonna, we're gonna fix them one by one. So my, my first drum stool that I ever had actually wasn't a drum stool and that was the problem. My very first drum set was this super cheap Alesis DM5 electric drum set that I bought used when I was starting high school. This drum set was terrible. And if it had come with a throne, it would have been a pretty terrible throne, but it didn't. Therefore, I had an even more terrible throne. <laughs> I had a piano bench that I borrowed from my keyboard on the other side of the room that was one of those super cheap, like the cheapest keyboard piano bench you can imagine. It's about this thick. It's got, you know, the X legs and the corners were chewed off by my cats. And so the foam's like falling out. There's like always like a puddle of foam bits on the floor around it and the upholstery is peeling. And you know, it's this thick. And so it's just not comfortable. And I've got it wedged into the corner of my room and I'm sitting on that as my drum stool, sitting on the corner of it as my drum stool. And there's my drum set. And I'm kind of cramped up there because my bed's over here and I got a bookshelf over here. It was a mess, but hey, I didn't know any better. <laughs> and so early on in my playing, I started noticing like my back's kind of hurting. I'm just not feeling very good playing. Shouldn't I be feeling a little better? But it's not like I had any experts there in the room telling me, Steven, your setup is terrible. You know, my drum teacher didn't see how terrible my drum, my drum setup was there. But eventually one day I finally bought a, a half decent throne and realized, wow, now that I've got this better throne, I can now adjust it a little differently. And I was seeing how other drummers adjusted and I realized, hey, my back doesn't hurt anymore. It was like magic. So this is what I, I wanna help you do today because I'm guessing you can relate to this. Let's get your throne optimized for your body because I believe that adjusting your throne properly will increase your balance on the kit so that you feel comfortable and able to relax. We wanna optimize your drum throne for your body so that you're not having to worry about how you're sitting and you can just play and make music. So three steps. Number one, sit higher. Raise your stool with the three to one rule. And this is especially necessary if you're playing heel up because if you're playing heel up, you probably actually need to be a little bit higher than this. But here's how the three to one rule works. It's as you might guess, take your height and divide it by three and that is the minimum height your throne should be. So that even rhymed. So let's assume you're six feet tall. Uh, just for easy math, let's assume you're six feet tall divided by three. That's two feet. So adjust your throne to be two feet high. And I think the way I originally measured this uh, was two feet from the floor to the top of the drum stool. Now, if you've got a really cushy one, you might want to go higher. If it's a more firm stool, okay, you can go lower because obviously you're going to sit into it a little bit. But this is a really good rough starting point. This is a guideline. You know, don't take this, you know, exactly 
know that you might have to play with it a little bit, but this is a great starting point. Take your height, divide it by three, and get your throne to that height. If you're heel down, that might be perfect for you. If you're heel up, you might wanna to continue to raise it just a little bit more, and that's gonna help you a lot. Uh, we'll, we'll explain a little more of this in a moment. Action step number two is sit farther back. Give your legs enough room with the two to one rule. Now this is especially true if you're playing heel down. If you're tall like myself, you're like 6'4", and you're playing heel down, you've gotta give your legs plenty of room. And there are some people I know who are my height who have legs even longer, you know, we're all different proportions. If you've got really long legs, you've gotta give your legs plenty of space if you're playing heel down. And so start with the two to one rule, take your height, divide it by two, that's your distance from the beater head, the batter head of the kick, to the center of your throne. So the, the pole at the center of your throne. So if you're six feet tall, that needs to be three feet. Now, if you feel like you've got really long legs or if you're playing heel down, it's okay to go even further than that. Maybe a little further than three feet could be your sweet spot. And so what I want you to keep in mind with these two guidelines, three to one for height, two to one for distance, know that your height might need to be a little bit higher if you're playing heel up. It might need to be a little bit further back if you're playing heel down. If you're playing heel up, you wanna err on the side of high because you're gonna feel a lot more stable with your heels up if you're sitting high. Because just think about it, if you're sitting on a bar stool in somebody's kitchen, you can tap your feet, tap your toes on the floor, heel up, and you feel fine. But if you sit down on somebody's cushy couch and you're sitting really low and your knees are up high and you're trying to you know, tap your feet heel up on the living room floor, that feels really weird, like you're teetering and it requires tons of core strength and puts strain on your back. So just think about this logically. The higher you sit, the more relaxed you'll feel, and the less strength and strain will be required for playing heel up. Now, if you're heel up, you can also get away with going a little bit closer when you're sitting high. Vice versa, if you're heel down, you need to go further back, but know that you don't need to be as high necessarily. You can do just a minimum of that three to one rule for height, but know that you might wanna go two to one or even a little further back for that distance, because the distance away is what you're gonna really wanna favor and pay attention to if you're playing heel down. So hopefully that makes sense. Those are some really great guidelines to start with there. But our third thing, because remember the, the, the third reason I suggested for why you're not feeling balanced might literally just be that you're not sitting up straight. Um, sometimes it's easy to slouch one way or the other or lean one way when you're playing the, the drum set and maybe you're leaning into the hi-hat, leaning into the ride. So self-analyze, that's your step three here. Self-analyze, film yourself playing? Are you leaning? Are you slouching? Sometimes the only way to know that to notice this is to video yourself. Set up a mirror. I've, I've had students who have their drums like set up in their workout room at their house and so they've got like the bench press thing over here and all the mirrors on the wall and their drums are set up here so they can watch themselves practicing. That's fantastic. If you've got a mirror that's great. You can see if you're sitting up straight but I think a camera is even better. You know we've all got you know 4k cameras that are crazy megapixels now on our phones and so just set up your phone and video yourself playing and video yourself from over here, kind of like the angle this camera's at. So get a side angle, see are you leaning forward while you play? Um, do a front angle, are you leaning side to side? Is one shoulder higher than the other? Are your shoulders tense? Because there are other things here that might not even have anything to do with throne height that are gonna become illuminated just by videoing yourself. The more aware you can be of these things, you know, awareness is always the first step, the more aware you can be of these things, then the, the better you can solve them. And then you can start you know, pinpointing them one by one. My hope is that just getting your throne adjusted is gonna solve 90% of this for you. At least 80%, 80-20 rule, rule, right? Maybe if you can solve 80% by sitting a little higher, a little further back, that's gonna help you feel more stable. So then you'll be able to devote more brain power to, okay, better posture here. Can I sit straighter now? which is then gonna eliminate the slouching and all of that. And so then the whole self-analysis step might actually be a breeze, it just might. But that's a critical step because you've gotta see how you're doing here and maybe you can have a friend, a family member um, watch you while you're playing and give you some feedback. And if you have a local teacher, um, that is even better. That is the best, obviously. Some bandmates maybe. So whoever can give you some good feedback on that and just say, hey, it looks like you're leaning this way or that, that can be tremendously helpful. So. We're talking about balance here, and we've kind of taken this indirect approach. Um, you know, it's possible that maybe you were hoping I was gonna talk about core strength exercises or something today, uh, or, you know, foot technique tricks. No, we decided to talk about drum throne because getting your throne adjusted, that is a quick thing you can do that's gonna get you results very quickly, and I think it will get you most of the way there. So what is all this going to do for your balance? because this is kind of an indirect approach. We've adjusted the throne and we're self-evaluating, but what all is going to happen with our balance from here on out if you do this? Well, 
for one thing, you'll feel more stable and therefore more relaxed. I promise you, when you sit a little bit higher, yes, it's gonna be an adjustment if you're not used to that. You're, you're gonna have to raise your snare, raise your cymbals and everything. But especially if you're tall and you've been sitting too low, this is gonna be a big adjustment for you. But if you take the time to get used to it, it's going to feel better. You're going to become more relaxed. So then you'll be in a better position for better posture and therefore better core strength building. Because if you're sitting too low and you're always like this, you're not able to really build the core strength that you need. But if you're sitting up straight and you're sitting higher and you're feeling comfortable, then your back muscles can actually do what they're supposed to do, which is not strain, but support your back. If you're sitting up straight, those muscles are supporting your back. So you're building that core strength that you need as a result of the good posture. And so then you'll be able to focus more on what you're playing and not how you physically feel, which is huge. And you'll even be more fluid on the bass drum and be able to play more quickly because when you give your leg more space, you're able to get a beater bounce motion going. You're not all choked up on the head like I was for way too long. I was able to give myself more space. So, okay, now we've got this motion here and I was able to feel more relaxed, which meant less knee pain when playing, which meant more fluidity, more volume, more speed, even playing heel down. We've done other lessons about this on the channel about how when you're sitting right and you give yourself some space, heel down gives you plenty of speed and power. You don't have to be heel up to have speed and power on the bass drum. You can do it heel down. Whatever feels more comfortable to you. Neither technique is better than the other, and some drummers even switch back and forth. But I do recommend you adjust your throne according to whether you're heel up or heel down and make sure that your throne height is making you feel comfortable with whichever you choose to do. But probably what's gonna happen, if you make these adjustments, you self-analyze, this upward spiral is gonna happen where you're gonna find your posture's getting better, you're feeling more comfortable, you're building more core strength, and just everything is better and better. So do this, let me know how it goes. And hey, before you go, question for you, do you play heel up or heel down? Always the big question, probably the biggest technique question among drummers, because um, we're usually split 50-50 on this. Do you play heel up or heel down? Tell us in the comments, let's uh, get some conversation going. Remember that no one way is better than the other, and each of these will give you just as much volume and speed as you need, unless you're just trying to play insanity, like brrr, with one foot, nobody needs to do that. Maybe that's easier heel up. I don't know. I want to I wanna play songs, and I figure that's why you're here too. You want to play songs. And uh, most songs do not require crazy kick work like that. But what most songs do require is being comfortable and confident behind our drums so that we can make music. That's what it's all about. That's what I want to help you do. So I hope this lesson has been helpful to you. I hope that uh, you're able to take action on this and really get some tremendous results. That is always my goal for you. So go take action. Adjust your throne, try out that three to one rule and that two to one rule and see if it doesn't help. And don't forget to go grab that e-guide, the 25 practical rock grooves and fills for the beginner drummer guide because if you're a beginner, it's gonna help you out so much with just jump starting your progress so that you can go play a bunch of songs. And so now you're feeling comfortable with the kit and now you're armed with the vocabulary you need to play songs. So hey, if you watch this video as a total beginner drummer, I hope that this has been super helpful to you because now you've got two resources to, to really have a lot of fun with this and make some progress on the drums. So go have fun, stay non-glamorous, know that you can do this as always. I'll see you on the next lesson.